welcome to lecture 23. Uh, in last lecture, uh, we discussed various aspects of uh, regional planning and few planning theories. In this lecture, we are going to see the urban planning methodologies and uh, some case studies. So, before we start, let me begin with the little bit of background we have uh, discussed that uh, within the urban governance framework, urban planning is a very important job. In 74th Constitutional Amendment Act, you have seen that urban planning has given the highest priority and whenever we work at the urban sector, the management of the planning function is a very important task because based on this management of the planning function, the actual development and the quality of the living depends. So, within that the basic methodologies, the practices uh, which is going on and which is uh, done before uh, this time and also uh, few uh, technical parameters we should know. So, let us start. So, this picture you have seen, I do not think that we need discuss again. Uh, this gives a very broad framework of the government. I will come to the planning framework. This also I have shown earlier. The planning framework earlier was the top down approach and now it is a, a bottom up approach. I will show how we are going to that paradigm. So, this is important. You can have a look that in this uh, framework, there are multi level planning framework. In uh, three tier uh, government uh, framework, the governance framework is connected with the planning and development framework as well. So, in the left side, you can see the central government, state government, district, metropolitan and urban local bodies level and gram panchayat and what committee level. So, we are discussing about this level right now. So, planning is conducted by the central uh, government by planning commission and now it is Niti Aayog. At the state level, state planning uh, it is done by state planning board. At the district level, I have told earlier it is done by district planning committee and at the metropolitan level it is metropolitan planning committee and at the central level it is called as five year plan state level plan it is also five year and the district level it is district plan or metropolitan development plan or perspective plan. So, periods are mostly five years uh, you can see uh, five years, but when we talk about the metropolitan plan or a the or a plan for a region it is 25 years and the plan provisions is done by the central finance commission for the state it is state finance commission and it comes through the uh, state finance commission to the local level so at the at the uh, at the block level or at the urban local bodies level it is the uh, development plan or in short we call draft development plan and annual plan so, development plan is usually done by 5 years and annual plan is done for 1 year and the finance is um, uh, provided through the central uh, the state finance commission. So, be below that there are gram panchayat and uh, ward committee. So, gram panchayat and ward committees they make their own plan and those plans are basically uh, basically integrated in a comprehensive manner to make a city level plan which we are calling a draft development plan and many draft development plans are making one regional plan or metropolitan plan. So, this plan is basically physical in nature economic and social factors are also considered and whereas, the central and state level planning which is by and large it is a economic plan uh, which gives a broad term direction for the country and the state. So, these are the planning typologies we deal. Uh, so, perspective plan is basically for a region or district usually for 20 to 25 years. Development plan for city or urban area usually it is 5 year years. In some cases, it can be more than that also. If the concerned uh, legal provision that is the state municipal act or corporation act allows it. Then within the development plan, we make zonal plan and annual plan. So, zonal plan is basically every city is consisting of various zones 
So for all those zones, we do the zonal plan and uh, followed by the annual plan. Sometimes the zonal plans uh, are also divided into area development area schemes or, or local schemes or local plan. So, do not be confused if you come across various uh, terminologies. Uh, so, area level schemes or local scheme or uh, local plans these are uh, uh, more or less synonymous basically objective of these are to make uh, detailed plan of the local areas which gives a input to the drug level up and plan and zonal plan. And then we do the project reports for every project. So, project reports are done for uh, individual project individual projects. So, this is the categories of and the hierarchies of the technical documents which we make under the planning. So, um, perspective plan, development plan, zonal development plan, annual plan, plan project reports. Mostly if you work at the city level, you will be preparing formulating the city development plan or urban development plan, zonal plan, uh, local area plan or area development schemes and the project reports. But yes, at times you will come to the uh, perspective plan or uh, perspective plan and the higher level of plans which you have to integrate your plan with those kind of planning. So, this we have already discussed. So, this is the basically uh, the hierarchy from top to bottom which gives a uh, hierarchy from the central government to the local level government. Now, let us discuss the planning process. First I discuss the planning process in principle. So, every planning process uh, starts with a vision, okay. it tries to uh, accommodate the vision of the people of that area. So, after the vision there is a ex, uh, uh, stage called existing scenario. So, on the basis of the existing situation of the city for each and every uh, parameter uh, it is it is um, estimated or it is uh, screened or it is assessed uh, the condition of the city. Uh, for example, the condition of the road and traffic, condition of the economic profile, condition of the social profile etcetera. And based on that and with, uh, with relation with the vision some objectives are uh, framed. Now, the difference between vision and objectives are vision are broad in nature and vision is basically a long term, long term uh, you kind of a dream or aspiration, aspiration. Whereas objectives are basically very specific in nature, and it should be presented in a measurable format, and which should be achievable within a time frame, and it should be reasonable. So, that it can be completed within a specific time bound framework. So, objective should be smart, specific, measurable, achievable, reasonable and time bound. So, once we make vision objective existing scenario, then we analyze the existing scenario and makes various scenario in terms of development scenario 1, scenario 2, scenario 3 and based on that we make strategies, policies and projects to reach any one of the scenarios. Now, how to select the scenarios, what is the prioritization uh, preferences that depends on the overall uh, discussion level, overall um, uh, um, analytical uh, discussion within the planning framework within the elected representative technical person etcetera. So, based on the uh, uh, preferred scenario or the second preferred scenario the adequate strategy policies and, and projects are framed. Now, let us see the within this framework there are few parameters which we discuss first is land use, the land use plan, infrastructure facilities amenities and norms and standards. Uh, in some uh, discussion we already discussed this the the land use where we discussed uh, gross land use and 
and net land use. The gross land use basically gives a land use at area level and net land use denotes a land use at the plot level or site level. So, for a city if you uh, represent a land use map or land use plan where you have uh, various gross land use uh, which is shown. So, it denotes the gross land use where minute land uses are not uh, highlighted whereas, when you make area development scheme or local area plan we sometimes we show the plot level or site level land uses also. Apart from that there are infrastructure, facilities, amenities based on some norms and stand, standards. So, so, at the end of any planning exercise we have to either specialize or specify the infrastructure, facilities and amenities for providing basic services, services based on some norms and standards, standards. So, norms and standards in India we have discussed earlier also we follow URDPFI for the planning standards we follow public health manual CPHWO manuals or we follow NBC for building related uh, codes. So, these are the codes, norms and standards which are followed even with, within the planning framework. So, next see the uh, planning control tools. There are few control tools that is uh, required. We discussed earlier the land use control, land use control in terms of land use and development control plan. Any land use plan or land use control plan whatever is the name it the objective of the land use control plan is to control the, uh, the development of uh, on uh, over the land. So, it denotes the development for example, residential, commercial etcetera. Whereas, development control regulation in short DCR it denotes the control of the building. Then the apart from the uh, DCR we can uh, there could be building rules and laws which denotes the very details of the building and the ancillary facilities or the amenities or the functioning of the building or the building the procedures of the building plan approval. And then there could be other uh, uh, tools like um, uh, advertisement trade license related acts etcetera. So, I am just showing you few uh, 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 points which is prescribed at URDPFI guidelines. So, development plan is a well written document and which should be in accordance with the statutory provisions of the relevant act. If it is a state a municipal act, if it is a state municipal corporation act it should be accordance with that. So, provisions in the state municipal act should be maintained in a development plan. Then it should be prepared for a period of 20-30 years maximum mostly in our country it is 5 year which is 5 years which we follow. I will show some examples also. Participatory planning is, rec uh, is recommended including segments of society. So, participatory planning in earlier some lectures uh, we discussed thoroughly that what are the stages and the variety of the participatory planning. Today also I will show, show some example. So, there should be some uh, elements existing conditions and assessment of the deficiency and statement of the vision and the mission as I discussed the proposal and also some highlights on the implementation how the project will, will be implemented. Just have a look even though the picture quality is not very good I will uh, share the PDF document with you. This is the typical plan formulation process uh, for any urban area. In this process if you see that there are this is stage 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 stages. So, in this in the stage 1 you can see that it is the aims and objectives of the project of the of the overall uh, of the overall planning which is made. At stage 2 it is the visioning exercise including quality of the life and participation. So, stage 1 and 2 is basically vision plus objective setting. Whereas, objective uh, the stage 3 it gives the, the norm standards planning principles and techniques. In 4 it is the 
uh, it, is, it is the stage where you are preparing the alternative plans based on the situation and in the 5 it is the selec uh, selection of the alternatives. So, these are the very broad stages which is prescribed in URD pre uh, guidelines uh, which is indicative in nature. I will show some of the practices which uh, deviates little bit from this uh, planning framework also, but it is important to keep this in your mind. You can see that uh, uh, another, uh, as a general process of planning as I told it is prescribed by the URD PFI, the aim objectives, identification of the site needs, so projected requirement and then the using the stakeholders consultation you can make the uh, inclusive plan and pl you can uh, formulate the plan then send the plan um, for the approval then implement monitor and then uh, you come back to the uh, decision and, and review uh, the revised plan and go back to aims and objective for the next phase of the planning. So, this is a general process of planning it can be used for city development plan as well as, as, well as for a area development plan at the schemes also. So, this this is a this this stage denotes that how a projected requirements are assessed at the uh, uh, urban local bodies level based on the primary service and the secondary service using remote sensing and geospatial um, uh, database uh, we make the projection of the population population and based on that we identify the projected requirement in, in terms of each and every infrastructure which is related. Then we also discuss the priorities and the carrying capacity of the of the uh, municipality or the city as such and for deciding the priorities these are the guiding factors for the priorities and we understand the infrastructure gap based on that and there are the coverage of the infrastructure uh, and the uh, life cycle of the infrastructure of the existing infrastructure should also be taken care of. So, ultimate objective of this stage is this is the identification of the projected requirement for the projected population. So, this stage uh, consists this stage is placed uh, somewhere in between uh, uh, in between the planning process every planning process has the projected requirement of the uh, of the city. So, you can see that this is uh, an example of the, uh, com the contents of the development plan which we were called as city development plan. In short, so during JNNURM in the last lecture we discussed thoroughly about the background of the JNNURM. So, in this uh, exercise the city development development plan was uh, formulated for the first time in the country for uh, pan India for all the local bodies and it was also prescribed that that plan will be uh, done uh, through the participatory process. So, just have a look that what were the components of the those city development plan. So, so these are the basic information of about the city profile then vision and uh, goals and strategies which are very essential at this initial level demographic profile land management and urban growth inner city uh, characters, inner city means um, uh, most of the cities are unplanned or organically developed. So, those cities are having inner city core city characters that character has to be depicted very clearly. Then economic profile, financial profile, infrastructure, environment profile, disaster management, urban poor and slum, conservation and heritage management, governance and institutional management, community consultation then a SWOT analysis, investment framework, city investment plan and institutional reform. Now, you can see that this, uh, uh, this exercise is very exhaustive in nature, but however, uh, it appears that it, 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 it may be uh, I mean it may uh, lack some amount of the very rigorous estimation of the for the projected requirement. However, it takes care of all the requirement in terms of the current uh, and the near uh, future requirement. Now, we see few are the few uh, example of draft development plan. In many municipal act 
the basic plan framework or the document is called as draft development plan because uh, municipalities uh, are not supposed to make the final de development plan it is by an, it is ultimately approved by the either district planning committee or the uh, metropolitan planning committee that is why it is called draft development plan. This draft de development plan was done uh, in the city of Calcutta under uh, Kolkata urban services for the poor. So, there are component 1, component 2 and component 3. Um, so, you can see that component 1 is basically focused on physical parameter, component 2 was focused on uh, economic and social parameter and component 3 was focused on organization parameter. like organization development plan, process and system development, citizens interface and financial. So, it is even if it is a planning document, you can see that component 3 takes care of the governance element. So, that the planning provisions or the development works can be conducted or can, can be streamlined in a better way through the efficient organization. So, these are the, the municipalities around the uh, Kolkata metropolitan area which were uh, involved that time to make the draft development plan. Uh, about 41 urban local bodies they uh, within this Kolkata metropolitan area they made the plans within this time. So, the stage 1 involves 1 month time, stage 2 9 months and stage 3 3 months and stage 4 6 months. I am not going into much details into the uh, intricacies of the stages, but you can at least see uh, the the key words like introducing, constitute, constituting the policy uh, group, constituting the technical group, formulation of the vision and objectives, preparing plan and plans, finalizing plans, integration, quality review and public validation and adoption and also approval stage. So, you can if you just remember these key words you will uh, understand the basic stages of the planning. So, these are few uh, 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 pictures we had during our visits in the municipalities we got these pictures uh, during our uh, appraisal of few of the municipalities. This is how at the urban local bodies level they do the workshops to understand the requirements of the people, these uh, workshops are done uh, at every uh, uh, ward level, uh, at every mahallas and um, uh, neighborhood level. So, every workshop has to be documented and whatever the citizens uh, feedback and the suggestions are there that has to be properly listed and prioritized during the uh, preparation of the uh, plan. Now, uh, let us see some of the physical plan or the land use map, land use plan how, how, how it looks like. So, this is the plan for Delhi uh, master plan, I showed this earlier also, this plan shows the basic land use plan of the, uh, of the city. So, this land use is basically gross land use, Bangalore, this is uh, another new township in, in Kolkata where the uh, percentage of the uh, land uses are also shown like residential 50 percent. So, well after this development plan is done there are another few stages which we also do uh, that is zonal development plan. The objective of the zonal development plan is to make further details of the plan at the zone level or at the area level. So, the contents of the zonal development plans are like the introduction, the background uh, and analysis based on the development plan. conceptual framework, some development strategy will be there, conservation and improvement of the environment, compliance of government policies, zoning regulations, development regulations, resource mobilization and implementation and implementation framework. Now, please observe that these stages, these stages definitely uh, is an is an is a additional task which 
you are required to do at uh, when you make a zonal development plan because uh, during the uh, development plan or a city development plan um, the zone, zoning regulation development regulations are not dealt but at the zonal development plan coming out with a zonal de uh, zoning regulation and development regulation which actually uh, uh, guides the physical development built environment of the city so this is very important in terms of the area level detailed development guidelines and after the zonal development plan when you take each and every neighborhood and mahalla and make detailed plan it is called local area plan in some cases it is called area development schemes okay so in short it is called lap so names could be different so uh, sometimes it can be uh, called as zonal plans so please see that what is the exact terminology which is depicted at your uh, municipal laws or municipal act so this plan you can see that it gives a clear cut indication of the plot level land use land use so plot level and site level land use was not there at the city development plan at the local area plan plot level land use is very very important and it is essential to depict you see another example of this is examples taken from the karolbag and bhashan beer from delhi so in this map also you can see the detailed land use at the plot or site level that is the difference between a uh, local level plan or zonal level plan and a city development plan a city development plan uh, denotes or prescribes the gross land use at the city level or the area level whereas the local area plan or zonal plan or area development scheme that denotes the 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 land use at the site level or the plot level so whenever you uh, see any local plan or zonal level plan please see in details the land use prescription for each and every plot because ultimately they are going to guide or control the development and in terms of possible conflicts and possible uh, indifferences in the municipalities uh, it may happen so that's why you have to see very carefully that what is the implication of the local area plan so after the local area plans are done then uh, few projects are selected and few projects are detailed in terms of the uh, detailed project report so let's see the contents of the projects and scheme any projects and scheme will have fundamental information like location site planning detailed drawing including technical drawing drawing like plan section elevation sometimes 3d also could be required and environmental impact assessment this is also very uh, important task when you deal a very big project for example very large flyover very large dam or very large uh, riverfront development so all these re needs uh, environmental impact assessment as per the current um, law then special impact assessment uh, could be required for some projects financial plan project administration or organization how the project will be implemented and legal support and constraint so this uh, uh, project level the contents of this uh, this uh, contents will be there for every uh, project report or the uh, dpr so if you have uh, seen any dpr again go through the contents of the dpr and see very minutely definitely will share some reference material so that you understand better so with this i conclude today's lecture today we discuss the uh, various planning methodologies and planning provisions uh, at the urban local bodies level and within their um, uh, structured framework so we have discussed that at the urban local bodies level we do draft development plan or the city development plan in a participatory method these plans are uh, 5 to 20 years of duration usually we do 5 years planning exercises basic stages are visioning at the objective setting 
then assessment of the existing situation, third is the analysis and the scenario building and fourth is the strategy and the projectization and implementation plan. So, based on that we have shared uh, example of JNNURM city development plan and then draft development plan under CAST program and then after discussing this we have seen the uh, elements of the zonal development plan and the local area plan. The objective of the zonal development plan and local area plan is to make plans at the very uh, local level uh, and it denotes the land uses for each and every plot, each and every site. Whereas, the land use prescription, density prescriptions are broad in city development plan and the master plans. And under after seeing the zonal development plan and the local area plan, we have seen the contents of a project. So, projects are the final uh, um, uh, deliverable after the um, uh, every planning is done, city development, development plan and zonal development plan is done. So, those projects will have few essential parameters that we have discussed with you. So, with this uh, I conclude this lecture, next day we will start the lecture on the um, infrastructure and services which is essential uh, element to deal in the urban governance. Thank you very much for um, uh, attending this lecture.